It's the 5th of July 2005 and 30 years ago today, iconic promoter Freddie Bannister brought Pink Floyd to a stage here at Nebworth Park and ripped the mind out of a hundred thousand people. I was one of those hundred thousand. And this is exactly where I sat! Thirty years later, we shall now attempt to maintain a little bit of dignity as we extract a slightly portly 47-year-old man who has been wedged into his kit car. And then I'll have a go at describing exactly what it was like here all those years ago. Right then, buttocks first. So far, so good. Stage. Great big thing. 60 odd yards. Bands, roadies, engineers, all that stuff. Racks and stacks of everything. Lights all over the place. Smoke, fireworks, bits and pieces. I'm probably standing where Dave Gilmore did. Up there was a 50 foot pole. It might have been more, I have no idea. It was a great big pole and I don't even know what it was for at the time. Anyway, we're all sitting there and Captain Beefheart is doing his Captain Beefheart thing and Roy Harper is doing his Roy Harper thing and Steve Miller is doing his Joker thing and suddenly everybody starts hooraying in the middle of the crowd and I look back and there's a blokey climbed all the way to the top of the pole and you think, oh, he's an engineer, he's doing whatever he's supposed to be doing until the tannoy said, will the man at the top of the pole immediately come down or the concert will not continue? And he sat at the top of his pole and he went, ah, as you would do if you had achieved such a thing. And the crowd went, yeah, more anarchy. And we were having fun and it was a beautiful day. And uh, he refused to come down. So a minute later, the tannoy said, will the man at the top of the pole please immediately come down or the concert will not continue? Hey, went the man at the top of the pole. <laughs> when a hundred thousand anarchists all trapped in one field. One minute later, will the man at the top of the pole immediately come down or Pink Floyd will not come on stage? Boom! 100,000 people silent daggers towards the pole. That man came down that pole like a fireman covered with grease. Foom! Down he came. The concert continued. I digress while well, I remember that memory. That was a good moment. Stage. Four great big loudspeaker stacks. There was one set of speakers here. And another set over here. The third one was here. And there was a fourth one right here. Pink Floyd started the set with the opening track of the new Wish You Were Here album. The one that goes for about two and a half minutes, making it, I think, the longest opening single note by a rock band in history. With the exception of when I got my little finger caught between two keys in my Korg M1 in 1987. But that's a different story. When the had gone on for two and a half minutes, the four speakers went bong, 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 bong. I believe it was the first time they used quadraphonic sound in a rock concert. 100,000 people went mental. After they finished the Wish You Were Here set, we went into the Dark Side of the Moon set. Huge, big round screen. Jet planes, no. Spitfires, yes. I don't think they arrived on time, but they had a good go. Big round screen, hospital trolleys rushing everywhere, lights and upside down people, fireworks, all this stuff. You know the one. Everything going mental. The whole thing. 
and then the purpose for the 50-foot pole was revealed to all. Unbeknown to me and 99,900 and probably 80 people, someone had scarpered all the way up this pole with a great big plane. Model one, which I think was a Spitfire. It goes to the stage and down comes the Spitfire in flames. We start to see it. Whoa! Smoke's coming off. Boom! Lights are flashing. It's all going to blow up. It looks immensely huge when you've had 14 pints of Carlsberg. <laughs> Little detour here, purely down to my imagination. Another detour there, purely down to my imagination. There must have been a wire. I hope there was a wire. Yes, we're going to make it. And kaboom! Boom, bang, fireworks, boing, da-da, boom, 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 the gong, bang, the big screen, whoosh, bang, wallop. We went mental. The evening drifted into a beautiful, starlit, wind-free, warm night. The lighting took over and so did the music. 100,000 people here were absolutely in awe and at complete peace with their surroundings. It was unforgettable and for me it must be one of the top 10 memories in an extremely busy life. I didn't know what they would do for an encore, didn't even think about it, it was too busy hoo, 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 in a way as you do. And the crowd went silent and the stage went silent and then they played one single note. Ping. And it echoed all around Nebworth Park. Ping. Wish You Were Here is notable by something extraordinary. When recording the song Shine On, You Crazy Diamond, which was written about Sid Barrett, a very fat, very bald, white-coated gentleman with no eyebrows walked into the Abbey Road Studios London, made famous by the Beatles. It took an age before Pink Floyd realised that it was Sid Barrett. He'd appeared out of nowhere to offer his services. He disappeared the same day and they never saw him again.